Hashtag TJ right or hashtag subtle wrong. And personally, I was uh, I was happy either way. What's up, guys? I'm Frodan. I'm joined by Savitz and Raven to bring you guys match number two for day number two of the Europe Winter Championship. Uh, how did you enjoy that first match here, Savitz? Watch from the sidelines. It's pretty awesome. I watched all of it and uh, Torch face. I like it, although I might have leaned towards the draw myself. Uh, yeah, fa face with Torch was also a possibility there. I don't think any other option was viable. Raven, uh, how are you doing, man? How are you enjoying day two? Yeah, a lot, actually. I think uh, that first set was really good, really strong set to start off with. Freeze Mage matches, Face Hunter matches, opposite ends of the scale. Although it looks like Freeze Mage is becoming, playing a bit more like Face Hunter nowadays, so always interesting. What a time to be alive, <laughs> where everyone's like, oh my god, Hunter, this is awesome! And the fact that it's so unique and different to the lineups that people bring up. Uh, but I think it's just a really important thing to show that these kinds of strategies are often under the radar, but that's why these strategies are also great to bring in a tournament because you can surprise your opponent. And I don't think it's any coincidence that two of the stronger players uh, at the other top eight brought Hunter. Yeah, diversity with the decks and the classes that the players bring are bringing is uh, is really cool to me. I really enjoy watching the different strategies, like the priest that we also have in the tournament. Hunter, when everybody was bringing it, it was not that fun to watch, but now now it, when it's such a rare thing to see, it's it's really cool and uh, it's also cool to see it work out for these players. That's right. Now you did bring up uh, one player bringing the priest. That's right. For our second match of the day, we'll have Pogravac go up against Diggin. Make sure to to hashtag who you're voting for on social media. Uh, make sure you hashtag HCT along with it so that way we can see the votes as we're filtering out all of those options. We'll reveal the polls in just a second, but for now, let's introduce our players. Our first one for match number two is Pakrovac from the Czech Republic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Pakrovac's actually uh, pretty much been bred to play card games. He started when he was six years old. His dad's taught him, and uh, he's got some pretty hefty results from other card games already under his belt, and uh, he's made it pretty clear that his goal is to be the best in uh, the game, like just straight up best in the world. And we saw yesterday some super solid play, and as we mentioned earlier, he is bringing the Priest deck, which is uh, super interesting to see. I like that. Bred for playing card games. I wonder if the... The father put that on his OK Pugil profile <laughs> at all. Our second player of the day is Diggin. 21-year-old Norwegian uh, lists as one of his uh, greatest strengths that he's very critical towards his own play, and that's certainly something that I personally respect a lot. I think it's important for for improving as a player to, to be able to recognize the, the mistakes that you're ma potentially making when you when you play, instead of just blaming it on bad luck or bad draws. Yeah, and also even when you win, you know the players that even after wins go back and go, how could I have actually played that better? And just continue to know that you can always learn and improve is really important in a player. Oh, certainly. And you can tell that they really want it, too. I think both of these guys have been heavily focused. You know, the fact that Pakovac has been playing with Stan Sivka and training a lot with him. And everyone considers Sivka one of the breakout players, but also one of the, t one of the top 10 players of the year. They, they voted from a bunch of people around Hearthstone, and he was definitely one of them. And if you're training with this guy, who's uh, already a world-class competitor, I think you're in really good company. Yeah, Stan Sivka also known for uh, creative deck building, and that's what we see here. The Priest deck that uh, Pokrovac is bringing is something that they cooked up together. All right, it's not November yet, but we're going to take a look at the polls anyways. Let's see what you guys were voting for. And it seems like uh, Pakravak has been getting a lot more votes here. But I do know that a lot of the players also have been putting their, their lot in. You know, some of the a lot of the players are watching along with us that you're used to seeing, you know, Tides of Time and saying a few of those other players online. They're saying, yeah, this guy, this young kid, 16 years old, is really good. You have to look out for him. Yeah, 16 years old. Last weekend we saw Amnesia, 15 years old, take it all down, and yeah. it would be a great Ma story. It makes us feel quite old. Yeah. It, 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 keep, it, it keeps the quest right. alive that uh, <laughs> all of the players at uh, the the World Championship might have to have a parent guardian mm -hmm. company with them on the trip. <laughs> Let's take a look at the lineups. It seems that the bands are in. Uh, Diggin has his Warrior band away, and Pac has his Warlock band away, leaving a Druid, Paladin, Warlock versus Paladin, Priest, and Warrior. And that is a really interesting lineup. Yeah, the Priest is very much alive uh, in this match, and we might see it in action. We've talked about it a lot, and it's such a unique thing to be bringing here. Playing that version with the double, the double Flash Hills, double uh, uh, Light of the Narus, no Death Lords, which is one of the because that usually is considered a staple. Yeah, something that it could fall victim to, though, is actually the aggro paladin from Diggin. Um, because, because if the aggro paladin is too fast for the priest and you don't start with that wild pyro and then a lot of the cheap spells to clear the board, and even no death lords as well, you know, that could really accelerate and close the game out. But it does look like it is going to be Druid versus Pokrovac's secret paladin first. 
Yep, pretty, this is an awesome matchup. I, I really enjoy w watching this uh, unfold. And Dick and looking at a wild growth uh, straight away there. So that's uh, that's exactly what he wanted to wanted to see. Yeah, so this Druid versus Secret Paladin. A lot of people were putting Secret Paladin as a favorite in the past. However, I do feel like it's gotten much better now that almost every Druid has gravitated away from Darnassus Aspirin, put Living Roots in their deck. It gives them early game plays and consistency. And on top of that, it also really makes it so that Druid has a lot more flexibility with a lot of their range and damage. However, Bakravach has the curve. He has like the early game plays, and Druid is going to have to fight behind that. So there are ways for the Paladin to make sure to grab the board early on with sticky minions and then just never let it go. Yeah, yeah. Bo both players looking at extremely solid as opening hands. Uh, I really like watching the games where either both players have an excellent hand or both players have a terrible hand. Because in those games, it's also really fun to, to watch them uh, try to make the best plays out of the bad options. Yeah, it's really interesting as well, the zombie chow in the secret paladin deck. Is it something that's super common, but we see it, you know, now and again. Uh, everyone normally favors the secret keeper and can really, you know, like accelerate. Because even as a 1-2, that demands an answer to the cards. Whereas the zombie chow definitely much more defensive in nature. Yeah, the zombie chow, it doesn't really go that well with an aggressive game plan where you just try to end the game quickly. However, it is an excellent tool for fighting for board early on with the uh, with, uh, stat efficient uh, cost. Yep, the Lothab does come down though, so it's uh, kind of awkward for Pogrovac to deal with at the moment, because if he wanted to kill it off, he'd have to pro like run in both minions, which never feels great. So I imagine we're going to see this ignored and maybe uh, you know prepare for something next turn, and he obviously couldn't get that Venge down either, which uh, kind of want to get that going pretty early to make room for the Mysterious Challenger uh, if and when he draws it later. Yep, no mind control deck for this board. There are four minions, but uh, this is a tough board to clear. This is one of the issues that the Druid has going up against the up against the Secret Paladin, because even though Swipe does clear things like Master for Battle 1 once very effectively, right now, if, if he goes for the Swipe, there's still going to be a lot of stuff remaining. Yeah, he could spend his turn clearing almost everything except for the mini bot off of the Swipe. If you also, but then he also skips development of anything else, really. I think you want to save Big Game Hunter. You want to, s you don't really want to use Savage Roar, and you definitely don't feel like innervating anything else out. What? So, uh, this is an awkward situation for Diggin. It's one of those turns that's not extremely obvious because Emperor Thorsen is not even that great to discount all this stuff either. No, there's very little value actually in the Emperor right now. The innervate doesn't, uh, <laughs> obviously, it does not get cheaper. Well, it does go down to four mana against the Lotus, but it wouldn't make any sense to cast it in that case. So. The Emperor still kind of looking like the only play, but I would imagine that he's gonna take out the Juggler with that low tap just to uh, not get into trouble against those free juggles. From yeah, and, and this board actually continues to line up awkwardly for the Paladin here. There's nothing that trades particularly well. On board, he can't just kill both minions, even though, you know, the, the low tap is a 5 2. It doesn't really line up that great. So, the Krovak's actually gonna have to do something a little bit funky or just leave one of the minions up, which feels kind of weird because. The Lothab's the easiest one to kill, but then the Emperor, mm. you, as we saw in the last set, can cause some crazy issues if you leave it up for more than one turn. Yeah, even though you look at the Pokerbox hand, it looks great. I mean, he has a five, turn 5 play, turn 6, and turn 7. This turn is a little bit weird, because if he goes for the Lothab, he will have to leave up either the Emperor or the 5-2 Lothab. And if he leaves up the 5-2, in that case, uh, it's going to trade for your 5-5. Five, five, and it's not so good, so I wouldn't be too surprised if we went for the just for the Avenge here. But uh, uh, I think if you play same. Lothab, you at least shut off the spells that Emperor Thorsen has discounted. It's true. So if your opponent does has like a handful of spells, it feels like it's better preparation for the Mysterious Challenger. On the other hand, the Druid is coming to turn 7. On turn 7, quite often, the Druid wants to play a uh, an Ancient of Lore or, or a Doctor Boom anyway. So so because of that, maybe the Lothab is, is something that he rather saves for later on. Yeah, but okay. we can see now from Diggin's hand, yeah, I mean, he can't really develop much, to be honest. He uh, can just put down that tempo BGH if he really wants, just to put something on the board. But it looks like this turn's mainly going to revolve around a lot of answers. But also, Diggin might actually look at trying to hero power first, because if that is Noble Sacrifice is the secret, then they, he doesn't want the Lothab to just die off straight away. Oh yeah, I, I really would like to see that uh, that hero of power. Uh, just the, the, from the way that the board is set up too, it, it really looks like it could be. Even though we, we know better, it is an Avenger, not a Noble Sacrifice. Yeah, and Wrath and Swipe is actually going to do pretty good 
versus this board. He'll rat it down, the Avenger will uh, go onto the 1-1, one, one, then he can just clear it off there. So, And still have mana to spare, actually, because of the uh, the Emperor came down and just reduced everything just a bit. Yeah, just a swipe alone is a full clear after attacking with the low tap into the Haunted Creeper, swiping the, the Avenger buff minion. The Wrath in Deacon's hand, even though it's, it is a nice, nice card that you, you can use later on to, to take out maybe the front half of a pile of the Shredder, I think that in this particular case, uh, cycling it wouldn't be too bad either. Ooh, that, there's the Avenge. Okay, so the Avenge lands on this target. And he chooses to hold with everything wow. else. Wow. I'm really surprised by that play from Dinga, that is. Yeah, I think one of the issues was because he chose to kill the minion first and not attack face to test for Noble Sacrifice. Ooh, he then, like, the swipe onto the Creeper, well, it still leaves tokens up, right? And then he, yeah. okay, he can Wrath one and draw, but maybe not as much value as he wants from that Wrath. But this is definitely a rough situation. And he, this is one of those weird options where Diggins got BGH for still two mana, but even now, like, well, if your BGH is, say, an Avenge minion, then there's Boom to follow up with as the Paladin is drawing pretty well and can right. just chain drop. And then he still kept hold of Lothab, maybe not on purpose because he had better play, um, but he's got Lothab for later to lock out anything in terms of a big AoE clear or, if you know, the combo from the Druid. Yeah, Digan is going to have a decent turn here, no matter what happens with this Avenge. Big Game Hunter and the Swipe, potentially the, the Wrath oh. too, will allow him to... Yeah, fairly well, good. That works board. out pretty well, I board think. Clear. Yeah, it does. So, big cam hunter, swipe. Yeah. Trade to load up in. You could also just draw yeah, and right. swipe. Yeah. swipe. I think I like that a tiny bit more. Yeah, because then it allows him to keep the load up, yeah. So And get that five to face. He's already looking at a combo in his hand, so getting that five to face right now is, uh, is actually a huge deal. And I wonder if Dignan was actually holding everything because he knew he could do this next turn. I don't think he was anticipating drawing Force of Nature, but I think that confirmed his plans. And look at that. I mean, Pakravak has to play Lothab in order to not die. Yeah, and this is the issue, isn't it? With, when, when your opponent's only got two cards in hand, how how can you really play? It is Druid, though, so we know they always have combo. But yeah. how much can you realistically play around that? That's the 100 problem, 100% right? Raven. <laughs> he has a 100%... He even drew a second tower. <laughs> just like, in case. Just, just to case. confirm it. And he did. Oh I don't even know God. why he even considered this wasn't an option. He didn't even use the reduced one. He was like, nah, I'll just, I'll yeah. just fill out the mana. Why not? The one that I drew off the top. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's one of those situations where I think there has to be more than meets the eye with Diggit's hold on that turn seven play. Uh, I think he was looking more at, look, if he plays Mysterious Challenger next turn, I can go for this swipe and wrath play with Beat Game Hunter and really swing the board. Uh, and if that's the case, then that was excellent read there by Digger. Yeah, things really worked out in the end. When the Avenge, the, when the first Avenge landed on the sp spider, I was getting a little bit worried for him because uh, there could have been that, that clear available instead by attacking him slightly differently, but it really lined up well for him and Pokerwak in the end has to go for the boom, even though it ended up being his downfall. He could have yeah. bought another turn with the low tap. I don't think the low tap would have been a winning play. Well, the issue was he would have played the low tap. Yes, he wouldn't have got comboed, but then he just takes the damage to face anyway. Then he gets comboed yeah. the next turn, right? And there's not much other than maybe a Tyrion, but I don't even think that at that point would have saved him. It's hard to say the Tyrion would block a lot of damage, uh, and we're not exactly sure if he'd be able to push past the Tyrion very easily, but uh, I'm inclined to agree, and I do think that, uh, you know, Diggin was in a good spot from that point onwards. Uh, so Pakravac is uh, down 0-1, and Diggin is currently up after struggling to get to this point, but they've definitely done a good job so far. We got a chance to sit down after the day one victories with both of them to talk about what it's like going up against each other. The next match is really important uh, to me, uh, to make it to the semifinals. That's my goal for this uh, tournament. Winning tomorrow for me would mean, like, I will be really happy, of course. And yeah, I want to win this tournament, so it will be awesome to win. I think uh, Pokrovac is uh, gonna be a really tough uh, series. I'm uh, just gonna look through the games and uh, prepare for uh, tomorrow. I am going with confidence into the matchup because I have pretty good lineup on him. I will just play, try to do the best, and try to win. All right, try to win. Do your best and hope for the best. In this case, Diggin is up 1-0, but the Druid versus the Paladin could have gone either way. I don't think that's the huge deciding factor. I was looking, looking at that Priest and wondering where it really fits into the lineup. I think that's one of the wild cards uh, for this game in this series.
Yeah, even though Digan is up 1-0, I think uh, his Druid had decent matchups against the against the decks that Polkrovak is bringing. So sometimes even when a player goes up 1-0, if they get a, get, the, get the win with a deck that struggles against the other player's lineup, they're in a, in a great advantage. But right now, it, it's still pretty close. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to play for. And also, it's interesting, did we see Polkrovak's Warrior yesterday? I'm not sure, because I think, did he play Warlock? I can't remember now. But if he, if he brings out the warrior, that's going to be really interesting versus what's uh, especially like the aggro part. And if he, it's all about just hitting the right lineups, right? In, in terms of the decks, it's really difficult to do as a player because it, it's how many levels of mind games do you really go with this second pick? Yeah, that's one of the challenges in conquest. Like you gotta be good at trying to predict what your opponent is bringing. And if you can nail it down, if you can figure it out what your opponent is going to pick, then you can counter it quite easily. And uh, here we go, Pokrova getting the better end of this in this particular instance, getting to play his Priest against the against the Digan's Zoo Warlock, and that's exactly what he wanted. Yeah, Zombie Chow and Pyromancer with spells to benefit and use that AoE onto the board. Uh, yeah, this is a very good opportunity. Zoo is something that is very hard to remove the board, but if there's one class adept at being able to pick it apart, it is Priest. Yeah, if you bring a Priest to, the, to this tournament, this is what you want to see. You want to line it up against uh, against Zoo Warlocks, and uh, I believe that's one of the big reasons why uh, Pokrovac chose to bring the deck, because he was expecting a lot of the other players to be bringing uh, the aggressive Warlock. Yeah, and we can see from the uh, Argent Squire in Digan, we saw yesterday Argent Squire be really, uh, a really good pick in Warlock, actually, because you have so many buffs, like uh, mainly that Abusive Sergeant provides so much trade-up potential, and actually pretty much deals with any minion that the Priest is going to play. The only unfortunate thing here for Digan is he didn't go first, so he couldn't get that down before the Divine Shield uh, could get proc. So he's going to go for the Void Walker. He's probably going to hold onto the coin so he can Dark Peddler and potentially coin out the one drop next turn. Yeah, not, not a bad card to get player. either. Yeah, that's uh, that should be, should be good at some point. Getting to draw those cards. Pokrovak is playing Circle of Healing, so the potential is there to be drawing a crazy amount of uh, of cards in one turn. Maybe in combination with the Wild Pyromancer later on. Yeah, it's something we discussed yesterday about this Priest deck and sort of this style of Priest in general is that it has a lot of cool combos, but sometimes your hand is is just bits of each one as opposed to you know being able to do anything uh, really powerful with it. So drawing those cards is going to be super important. So we can just have a full hand and then just chain these combos off as and when he wants to see them. It's slightly scary because almost any way you cut it, there's a way to get punished for this <laughs> turn. If your opponent has an abusive sergeant and you just choose to heal defensively, he can kill your zombie chow. If he has power overwhelming, you lose your cleric. So there's one of these things where you just kind of have to pick one or the other. What's more likely to have it? And I think you're much more likely to keep an abusive sergeant than you are a power overwhelming. Yep. So I do like this choice from uh, Pokerbox. Yeah, it wasn't obvious. It was not an obvious turn at all. Keeping the power of our shield for later on to to play it in combination with the wild pyromancer was also an option. But against the against this type of warlock, you you really wanna wanna play stuff on every single turn. You wanna use your mana efficiently, and getting that one five on the board right now is much more uh, powerful than just let's say healing up the zombie chow after that. Like, so yeah. you were digging that play, Savits? Nice. I was definitely digging that play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a good play as well from Digan. He had, a, he had a, again, just a, another sort of difficult turn. There were so many options to do, but Owling the, the Cleric is like, as, for the reasons we have just discussed, was super important. Yeah. So maybe not the, the biggest play doesn't remove any of the minions, but just gets rid of the threat of the uh, sort of heavy oh, card draw. But what? I was just about to say that. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say that that uh, Bokrovak would love to have the power shield still in his hand. But he draws the second one from the top. Yeah, why do you need to you know, yeah. think about the first one if you can just draw the second one, Savit? <laughs> and another one mana spell to go <laughs> along with it. This is a runaway game already. Diggin is in huge trouble. He's going to hope that My maybe the Dark Pillar gets some soul fire or Model something. Coil. Dragon oh. Egg. <laughs> well, that power of would have been useful two turns ago. It sure would have, but right now that's that's pretty rough. The Blood Imp seems completely useless. The Wild Pyromancer is already on the board. Probably going to clear it. Hey, well, not completely sweet, useless, sweet. but... He can Blood Imp and then Defender of Argus next turn. Yeah. And, uh... I guess the Dragon Egg has some synergy with the Defender of Argus, yeah. so that's a kind of a solid pick. Well, either way, you just chose to just yeah. pass over that, that really bad joke there, so he's just, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well... Bakravak has some interesting opportunities in the following turns, but I think he can just play this one a little bit slow as well. Yeah, I don't think he's necessarily in, a, in any rush here Yeah, to, to cast any of his cards, really. He could just heal up his zombie chow, take out the... the <coughs> excuse me, the, the Dark Peddler. 
probably even clear the egg because there's so many buffs in the wall of deck. So if, if possible, you always want to keep the board completely empty. Okay, so he's going for a full clear. This is fine to heal up the oh. Iron Man. Yeah, and I think the idea against uh, Zoo especially is they cannot really come back onto the board once they lose it. It's really difficult. And especially against Priest that can just keep healing these minions and get so much value out of them, that all uh, Prokovac wants to do is just empty the board every I single turn for his opponent. So then, again, we just see the Dark Peddler come out, and it might be Dark Peddler Creeper. But with this wild wow, Pyromancer down, there's so many things he can do to just clear this board. Yeah, here, the Zombie Chow, I don't think it's that bad, because you do have to fight for the board. However, he has two mana available this turn still, so picking the Zombie Chow and playing it means that the Haunted Creeper would not get played. Do you think there's any merit to playing, taking the Corruption? I was just going to say saying, that. And corrupting the Pyromancer, yeah. just be like, well, I can't kill this ever, and it's a continual threat. <laughs> and it's going to kill all of my board every turn, potentially. <laughs> it certainly was an option, yeah. It's Savita's way to pander to be like, yeah, Frodan, it was an yes. option. <laughs> That's what this cover is, to He could have done that. It was Correct. an option. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Feels Just, bad, man. Uh, yeah, the corruption is a little bit unreliable, and the, the wild pyramid could have still been able to take out that uh, that dark peddler before the corruption kicks in. So sure. I don't know how well it would have worked out on this circle of healing. So if he wants to, he could just go for a draw three wow. cards with that cleric oh circle. My God. And while doing it, also clear the one ones, heal up yeah. his minions. I like Seems it. Seems good. He can do a lot of stuff with two cards this <laughs> time. This is beyond good. This is amazing. Because Priest, one of the things that it can struggle with uh, is that it gets outcarded by Warlock. But it's not going to be the case at all. He's going to double his card advantage. <laughs> Regardless of the low depth effect, yeah. Warcraft I finding an amazing combo. I wouldn't be surprised if Diggin. Uh, tries to play this out for the rest of the game, but it feels like he needs to whip something like a miracle off the top of his deck right now. Yeah, and the problem is that after that kind of card draw that you've just seen the priest do, you just think, oh my god, that they will just have an answer to any sort of strategy I try and like move forward with this game from. And as we can see, there's Cabal for any small minions played. He can entomb anything that's bigger. He can just play Belcher. You know, he can just do whatever he wants this game now. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult for Diggin to uh, fight back in this one. Very difficult, if not impossible. A couple of Shadow Priest also in Prokrovak's hand, so if Diggin finds those, uh, let's say, Imp Gang bosses, which generally is a, is a very good minion to have, it's not that good against the Priest. Yeah, he's in quite the hole, and he needs to really find his way to tunnel out of here. The situation's pretty bad, though. I mean, if you look at what Diggin has in his deck, what can he even really have access to to bring him back in? Because Makovac has like Entomb for big single targets. He's got Light Bomb if the board expands too far. And he still has ways to even capitalize on value, like Cabal Shadow Priest can completely just take that uh, two, three. He can also uh, just play Sludge Bush number two. It, it almost feels like any con any action that Pokervash chooses will be a good play this turn. Absolutely. And uh, he's going for some draws here. That uh, The Wild Pyromancer effect is going to damage all of his own minions, so it doesn't feel quite perfect, but. He's going to be able to just get imagine some if he awesome joined the circle. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> be yeah. That would be ridiculous. Nope. No. Oh. <laughs> at that point, we, secretly like we all wanted to see the circle, though. <laughs> we all wanted to see it. You know, it's just excessive because you don't need anything. Yeah, it's like but it's, it's, by the way. It's just a form of BM. He would just overdraw. He'd be like, yeah, sure. I'll just burn some cards. It's fine. It's <laughs> so funny that it buffs twice because yeah. of the things. Those zombie chops from both yeah. sides. <laughs> And we kind of joke that you can't really win as Priest very often, but Light Warren is a very realistic way to add a huge win condition to the board. Game two is in the books, and that means the series is tied one to one. That Priest deck, not bad. Is <laughs> not it undefeated in the tournament so far? I think it is. Yeah, there you go. Working very well there. It might sometimes struggle with, like Raven mentioned, it might struggle with the draws. Maybe you don't, don't draw the combo. For example, Orcanai Circle. If you just draw an Orcanai, just draw a circle, it doesn't always work that well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You do need all the little pieces to make it work, but big card draw turns like we saw from that game just make that happen and make it really difficult for the opponent. Yeah, I he think also had Chow and, and Pyromancer work out the way it did. But yeah, I think that the second the power of shield pickup was absolutely huge, and just like from that point on, there was almost nothing that Digan could have done to get out of that hole, except get a bigger shovel. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we have the series tied one game apiece. I don't need your pity laughs of each. <laughs> Two <laughs> paladins, <laughs> uh, a warrior, 
and a warlock. So, okay, just my American sense of humor coming out there. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, with that aggro paladin still remaining, and if it has that edge over the paladin over uh, po Pokervage, I still feel pretty confident queuing that up here. Yeah. If I'm uh, if I'm in digging shoes, that is. Aggro paladin, that's also something we don't see all that often. It's going to be interesting to see how it lines up against uh, what the... Uh, what the Bokerwak has remaining. Yeah, and especially because this is day two now, so one of the benefits of Agro Paladin is it's one of those decks where it can be turn four or five and your opponent still doesn't know it's not Secret Paladin, which is the general one you expect. But now these players will know pretty much the ins and outs of most of their opponent's decks. So you can mulligan differently, react differently, and uh, really just play to the exact deck list that your opponent has. All right, so uh, before we go into game number three, let's get to know uh, one of our players from Czech Republic, Pokerwak, a little bit better. I'm Pokrovak, I'm 16 years old, and I'm from Czech Republic. Living in Prague is pretty fun. I want to live there in my whole life. I started playing card games when I was six. My father just put some cards together and we were playing. I started playing tournaments competitively at something like nine years old. I were on three Grand Prix, two were in Prague and one were in Bochum. And I did some money finishes on them. And then I also started playing the table tennis, and it was fun. I started playing Hearthstone when some guys from that another card game told me it existed. And after I started playing, I hit Legion in one and a half weeks. Definitely my past experience with other card games helped me a lot in Hearthstone. So I'm on high school right now. The people from my school, they are like, oh, it's a poker rock. Can they stop me sometimes and just take a signature from me or something like this. It's really cool. My father was really important for me because he was every time a biggest support for me. I was nervous on competitions, but he taught me how to focus on the games, do not pay attention for other things and he was like, you can do it, you can win it. And But my mother is more like, I have to study more, play less of my games. If I win this weekend, my mother will definitely be more supportive, I think. My chances for winning this event are big, yeah, I'm really confident. My practice partner for this event was Ostan Sivka, and we were training a lot, like four or five hours every day and then a whole weekend. I want to prove I'm the best in the world and I just want to win the world championship, maybe to be idle for some new players. So representing the Czech Republic doesn't mean much for me because I just do not care much about these things. I'm just playing for myself and I want to win it, not for Czech Republic, but for me and for my parents are my supporters. I'm Pokrovak, and I will prove you I'm the best in the world. He's really 16, man. I actually kind of was getting a little... I was getting this vibe where this guy's really, like, done it all and seen it all, but he's just 16 years old, and he's also in high school. Really impressive run so far, being able to bring not only that amount of confidence, but also that priest to the lineup, which is the heavy center focus, and it's already won out of the way. So I have to admit, man, Pokervok has got me convinced as one of the strong players also in this field of eight. Yeah, definitely showing a lot of confidence with the lineup that he's bringing. Not just bringing like the, the usual uh, like Druid, Secret Paladin, all, all that stuff, but a little bit unique here. And uh, yeah, winning the, the grand prize here, getting the $25,000 would certainly be something to convince his mother that this yeah. is not a waste of time. And hopefully get a better <laughs> phone too, because I was watching him browse through <laughs> and I was like, oh no, he dropped his phone. Yeah, but I think his actual tournament experience uh, in the in the past as well is really important because for a lot of these players, this is their first like live event, you know, sort of grand tournament, and uh, the lot of like pressure that you feel sat, you know, looking into your opponent's eyes on that table, trying to work out what's going on. But he's done this, you know, like probably a million times by now, so that's yeah. really going to help him out. Yeah, he mentioned his father in this interview. He traveled with his father because his, his dad used to play in a lot of other competitive games as well, you know, card stuff. I feel like yeah. him and his dad are the, the Bobber and Django fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they compete together. It'd be awesome if his dad ended up trying to qualify for uh, the HCT <laughs> as well. <laughs> then we have the dad versus the son. What a story that would be. Yeah. 
Anyways, going into game number three, it's already begun. Uh, Pokerfuck choose to end up passing on turn one, so that way he can get better value off of things. Uh, no, he actually uh, coined, coined out that mini bot, but... Uh, oh, I'm going, sorry, I apologize. Going for the mini bot here uh, is, is definitely like the better choice out of the out of the two that he had. He could have went for the juggler, hope that there's no abusive surgeon, but it's just so unlikely. Yeah, that, I think, uh, it's also likely that he I think the it. times you always hope there's no abusive are the times that there are always abusive sergeants, so it's very difficult to... You've been stung by that too many times, right? You just yeah. go, no, I'm just playing the safe route and having a, a bit of a more guaranteed uh, safety net from there. Yeah. Yeah. Abusive Sergeant will be able to knock out yeah, this knife jugger. It's a really big threat. Yeah, really uh, bad start from uh, Dick and Still. Going for going for that hero power on turn two is not something you want to do in a tempo-based matchup. Yeah, but at the same time, he still has a decent board. He's just gonna cross his fingers for nothing, like mustard for battle. Well, there it is. Yeah, well, you just you just cross your fingers. Doesn't mean it will happen. You can still try. Yeah, okay. that's true. I hope for the best. I really like the owl play the, there though, because just floating the mana and tapping just wouldn't have done much. Whereas the owl, right. even though it is just science off a divine shield, that divine shield, because it was still on and not yep. been knocked off, would have got a lot of work done. So I really like that. It's, it might look like, oh, he's just owled a 2 2. Why does it matter? Yeah, I mean, saving that owl for later on would be extremely valuable. The Deacon is, uh, is in a lot of trouble, though, and I do agree so that in this particular situation, he kind of had to go for it, even though the value from the owl might have been even greater later on. Yeah, it's like, oh, owl in Tyrion is always good, but you know what? You might not make it to turn exactly, eight if, if, you, you, don't uh, if you don't play yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, it's always good to get down. And Implosion is there, glowing green on this turn. And this is one of the cards that can actually really help out in this matchup, as both classes Whoa. are actually going to just battle for the board. And rolling for four definitely definitely helps out. Well, that's Definitely. huge, because it allows him to leverage the board for the future trades. Cards like Defender of Argus get much better compared to just two imps. Um, and it's just like one of those things where it'll matter because now that Paladin has less minions on board and Diggin has a little bit more. Yeah, the fact that uh, he rolled exactly four and nothing else is a, is, a, is a huge deal because now he could potentially be buffing it. He, just about the, the power of Oming not looking too tempting here. Just gonna go for the low tap and... Uh, yeah, well, I think the thing here is yeah. um, Digger now has al almost like the minion initiative, right? So he's always gonna be a bit more ahead. And now it looks like, yeah, you know, you can trade into the low tap. The Peacekeeper's helping massively so the Shredder doesn't die. But you've put two minions on the board, but it's very likely that Zook could put three minions on the board this turn. And that's very much how this matchup goes until there's like a really strong blowout turn from one player or the other. Yeah, that Alder Peacekeeper from the top was an excellent pickup for Pokrovac. Being able to keep Keep his uh, shredder uh, in the in the shredder form, so to say. Yeah, and this is the value or, or the, the the better version of why you bring Zombie Chow in this deck. Because in these kinds of matchups, it's so much better than Secret Keeper. Because it's just that extra one health and the extra attack straight off the bat is uh, going to do so much work here as well. Yeah, even though Pokrovac has a kind of a commanding lead on the board right now, My seal for I don't think it's impossible for. A, for, for uh, Deacon to come back, just looking at the, looking at the hand that Volkrovac has right now, because it's very low on value. There's no Mysterious Challenger, no Doctor Boom, no Tyrion Forging, nothing like that. The True Silver is not a bad card, but the, but the secrets, well, they are one damage AOE, which helps you clear the board a little bit. They are, but they also damage your own minions, and he actually has more minions on the board than his opponent does. So, mm. looks like he just wants to get rid of the Wild Pyro in order to be able to play those secrets. It makes sense, given that, uh, again, because he, has to, he wants to play multiple secrets, he doesn't want to <laughs> play everything and kill his own minions as well, so... Uh, one of those tough situations. But it's still okay, because in the end, this is a pretty big board for a competitive spirit to land on. It is. And, and Diggin's probably going to just play Dr. Boom into this. Yeah, he has to. I think one of the things as well is um, you just really do try and splurge as much minions onto the board as possible and just make your opponent try and answer it. Because Warlock especially, Paladin can have Consecrate, right? So, you know, they have a, a half decent AoE a lot of the time, especially against Zoo. But uh, Zoo doesn't really have any AoE whatsoever, you know, nine times out of ten in the deck. So it's going to be really difficult. And this competitive spirit did go off because the boom landed. And this is now suddenly representing quite a lot of damage. It is, but another weak card from the from the top for Pokrovac and uh, after this turn he really doesn't have anything to play so hey he, he could get redemption on the zombie chat man <laughs> yeah that, that's good right do you even play it I don't think you do no I don't think that no I don't think there's any particular need unless he's hoping well unless he's maybe hoping if he clears the board top decks Tyrion then yeah redemption's good 
Yeah. But then, <laughs> other than that, it might be a bit of a problem. Aww. Well, the, the target that you ideally want to Redemption has been uh, killed off, but I think it's okay. I think there's a lot of mind games into what might alter Diggins' play as well. You never know if he ends up believing that it's repentance and as a result replaying, sequencing things a little bit wrong. Yeah, and uh, Pokerwalk still with the lead, but Deacon has that hero power which allows him to draw two cards a turn and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him kind of slowly take over from here unless Pokrovac uh, gets uh, one of his uh, late game cards. Yeah, I think one of the, the big things here is for Pokrovac is that his weapon is actually like just super important because he can guard his minions and not have to trade them in for it and just take out almost anything the Warlock's going to drop this turn, which is going to be super important for, to just keep that board because he's got no cards. So he's relying on top decks and we know one of the weaker things about Secret Paladin is that he just can't top deck very well late game. Yeah. What do you think, Frodan? Uh, is it Bran? Is it time for Bran here? <laughs> He's gonna just go for it. He gets yeah. no value from the ability, but uh, getting the 2-4 on the on the board is certainly something. I think it's too optimistic to think you can get value off of Bran. The only battle cry so, you have too. in your hand is the Abusive Sergeant. And then I think you just need to fight back on board. He has the Truce Over Champion, and if he doesn't need to use it, it's just still going to be a problem. Bran is kind of nice to have for, for something like Dark Peddlers to get those extra one mana cards, maybe Mortal Coils, but but in this particular situation, I don't it's think the he has the same situation as the Owl, way. right? Yeah. Like, you know, if, if you hold on and hold on, then you'll just lose before you can do anything anyway. Yeah, I feel like Deacon just ha does not have the luxury of waiting, exactly. waiting with it. All All right. creeper. I mean, he's going to be tapping again, but he needs something pretty strong to fight back on the board. Gormok doesn't have enough enablers. Uh, not yet, and uh, those were not, not exactly the cards he was looking for. Do, you, do the, you think you just drop Gormok, uh, Gormok anyway now? Because you oh, just yeah. kind of need to play, right? Again, it's just... He, Diggins has been such unfortunate situations this game where all these minions and, and effects are really good, but he just never had the opportunity to get the full potential of them uh, out there, whereas this is just a 4-4-4-4, four, 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 which isn't terrible, but definitely not as good as when he proxies Battlecry. Yeah, I absolutely agree with playing the Gormok here. There's no guarantee that the Battlecry would uh, would work on next turn either, and he has to fight for the board any way he can. I wonder... How would you go for the trades uh, from Pokervot's side? He has a couple options of how he wants to try to either shrink down his opponent's board or play aggressive. I think you just gotta ignore the... So oh, he's going to, uh, for the Spider. I was okay. surprised he didn't actually go for the juggle first. Yeah. Because if it hit any of the other two minions, like if it gets the Gormok, you save your Shredder. And if it doesn't, you can do it the other way. So He does have the Noble Sacrifice up, so that's that's definitely meaningful. It's going to hold the Gormok at bay for now. Oh, Dark Peddler comes in. Definitely a useful card could come out of it. Yeah. And he wants to just get any signs of really strong cards. Knife, Knife juggler. juggler. If he had the Haunted Creeper still, that would have been really nice. Yeah. Still Certainly can pick up have. something nice though with the Dark Peddler. We'll see. It's like a soul fire would actually work quite well. Oh, oh wow. That was that's Angry bad. Chicken Murloc Raider. Wow, redemption of the one. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, after attacking the Noble Sacrifice wow. could potentially uh, kill off the juggler. Knife juggler gang fights. You knife my guy, I knife you back. <laughs> well, uh, the Void Walker here seems like a pretty good option. I think he knows now that it's Noble Sacrifice, though. And do you actually up? just want to play the Abusive here as well? Do I just feel like he just needs every single minion he can? Because that juggler is going to do some work regardless as we're about to see the Noble Sacrifice come out. Oh. Where's he going to go? What if he juggles, 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 juggles the juggler? Oh! The full revenge Sniped. kill! <laughs> oh Look, I told you, man. You kill my recruits, I kill you back. Volkrovac is like nodding. Yeah, that just happened. <laughs> this is our town scrub. I think, uh... Oh, man. Oh, that's helpful. How, how many secrets are left? Uh, I don't think so many, At though. another Avenge and, and a Noble Sack. Noble sack nice. two, two secrets, probably, yeah. So that should wow. be Noble Sack and an Avenge. This Definitely juggler. This yeah. juggler this is insane. Awesome. Oh, that's not a bad one to get either. The extra card. Is he going to hit the goal mark? Yeah, he will. Ooh. With the, with the Silver Hand Recruit. Ah, yeah. <laughs> See, let me finish nice. my sentence. Nice. <laughs> Well, in this situation, you are just sad. There's no way you can really answer that mysterious challenger. Why Not to mention you that uh, you probably might die next turn if your opponent picks up some way to buff his minions. Yep, and there's the same problem as well where Pokrovac can actually just clear off the Voidwalker and there's another Noble Sacrifice down. So just that Sea Giant just almost doesn't exist other than the ability to soak up these generals. I kind of wanted him, him for, uh, to go there for the Blood Mage's draw first to maybe see if he can get a Boom or a Tyrion Fortune, but 
He has it? something, uh, some I think, slightly different plans. Yeah. I think the issue is he was weighing up whether he could get a juggle first, because if he didn't, he might have to trade something else into the Voidwalker, because uh, otherwise you're just sort of throwing away that one damage for the card draw. Yeah. But that much mana, though, I, I don't know why, why would you not get the card draw? Because the spell power from the Blood Mage is meaningless, and the one damage to the face is also meaningless, so like, any card that he would have picked up from it could have been good, but in any case, uh, Diggen goes for the concede. Nerubian Egg and Dival Valve are not going to do any good in this situation. 2-1 lead for our Czech player. He's one game away from going into the winner's match tomorrow. And if he's able to do so, uh, he'll be playing against Neyman. So this is a really good spot for him to be in. Just has to win one more time with his Warrior deck up against the Paladin and that Warlock. So Diggin has his back against the wall, and if it's the Patron Warrior coming out here, I think he might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, the Patron should, be, should do quite well against those, but if it's a Control Warrior, that's a whole different story. Yeah, the uh, I'm just looking forward to Diggin picking this Aggro Paladin, if he ever locks it in, or whether he chooses to go with his Warlock again. Just because I think like the deck's so fast, and there's a lot of the time, as with many like Hyper Aggro decks, there's not a lot you can really do about it if it gets the fast draw. So maybe you just want to pick that and go for like a Confidence win first, and then try and do something with the Warlock a little bit later. It's yeah. true, the Warlock's not working out for Diggin that well, and he needs to win his next two games in order to stay alive in the series. Uh, before we get into game number four, let's get an opportunity to know proud Norwegian Diggin a little bit better as well. My name is Eirik Diggen Årvig. It means a lot to me for uh, to play for Norway and the uh, Gamers League in this tournament. Um, yeah, I'm just a proud Norwegian. I started playing Hearthstone at the release and uh, after a while I uh, had to join the army. I was still uh, really into Hearthstone when I joined. But the first two months, they uh, they took our uh, electronics uh, away, and uh, yeah, it was a nightmare. Uh, and then I became a guard, which was uh, perfect uh, for me, because uh, there was a lot of uh, dead time, and uh, yeah, a lot of time to play Hearthstone. As a guard in the army, I was uh, there was one post where we had to watch the security cameras. That was my favorite post because uh, I could just play um, Hearthstone and uh, look at the security cameras once in a while. At the place I worked, we had uh, signals when uh, our higher-ups uh, came, so we could see them entering uh, the building. So it wasn't a problem. My name is Diggin, and this weekend I'm gonna make Gamers League proud. Alright, so a pretty happy ending there for his time being able to get connected with Hearthstone. Although I'm pretty sure if anybody who's looking to hire security guards or bouncers for their clubs, this guy is not the guy you want to be looking at. Yeah, to he's, just he's openly not, admit, like, I, I really secure. enjoyed my job because I didn't have to do my job and just play Hearthstone I'm here because I wasn't like, doing my job. Uh, <laughs> it was only security. It was fine. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit funny to me, that's all. I think it's a, it's a great story. I think it's awesome that he's so proud to represent the Scandinavian regions. You know, because the reality is, outside of the very handsome man sitting next to me, there hasn't actually been too many players outside that region that have good, good showings. I think Vortex is a player. The world for, champion is Swedish, so... Well, I, I guess I was looking at Finland and Norway, not really Sweden, but it's I guess. like right in the in the middle of okay, those countries. I so I, that counts. Are you just <laughs> are you just throwing in with the, uh, like everyone else? <laughs> but yeah, Finland doesn't count. We're, well, Sweden, we're everyone here. Sweden's like a powerhouse in every single game. I meant more. That's true. I meant more. Sorry, you're you're right. When I say Scandinavia, I meant more of Finland and Norway. <laughs> not Sweden. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's okay though. Famous. Europe's my favorite country. Though. I'm waiting. Maybe on the spring uh, spring season we'll have some fins here. Hopefully me being my ignorant American self. <laughs> it's okay. It wouldn't be a, a Hearthstone cast without it. Taking a look at this matchup, it's going to be very difficult to overcome the flurry of whirlwind effects from death spites to whirlwinds to the fact that you can clone things with Patron pretty much against every minion in Zoo is a really problematic thing for this matchup. However, uh, Zoo can build up enough pressure early on 
if you draw dead as the warrior. It's true, and there's no fire warrior. Some some players refer to it as the fiery win axe, because the, the difference between having it and not having it is so huge in, in matchups like this, and just the hero power on turn two. It's fall, gonna fall a little bit behind on the board for now, but he does have some tools that might potentially bring him back to the game, like the Death Spite. Yeah, I think it's really important. He does have the Death Spite and also just drawing into that patron, because when if you want like an overview of this matchup, if the patron warrior gets patrons on turn five, they just win yeah. you know, nine times out of ten. It's just like so difficult, as you said earlier, Frodan, to to uh, deal with a board of patrons with Zoo. They have trouble AoEing anyway, but especially when those minions clone themselves, it's just almost impossible. But Despite's going to come out now with the coin, get it out early, and uh, get some work done as he just takes out the board pocket. Yep, and another uh, kind of an awkward draw from Digan here. No imp can boss for turn three and has to go for that life tap. And uh, mm. here against that death spite, none of these plays to look too good. It's scary too because uh, Pokervok has three cards with the Patron, Whirlwind, and the Death Spite that can be extremely strong. So we'll see how things end up developing, but I'm pretty sure Pokervok is in a really good spot now that he has Shredder, like a reliable play on turn four. Yeah, I actually uh, really like this Gormok play because because he coined out the Death Spite. This is not this is not five mana turn for the Warrior. So he, he wants, you'd think he'd want to keep the Death Bite to yeah, build patrons. It, and he's saying, it, yeah. well, if you do that, then I get a 4-4 left on the board. And it has worked out. So I really like that play. I think a lot of people would be forced to like, oh, there's no point in me just sacrificing a 4 health minion up to Death Bite. But that was uh, that was really nice there. Yeah, I think some of the, like, maybe the newer players would have just been looking at, okay, well, I have this Death Bite. And it seems like uh, it's pretty good. They got the 4-4, but holding on to it is definitely very important. Digan could, could be playing something like an Implosion here. I think the one ones would get geared out easily and sure. also keeping that world in the effect to get more patrons wow. very strong it's a very strong turn you know I, I actually am wondering you know did, did Pokemon rush this at all because he did end up coining out the death spite giving up his ability to use the patron whirlwind effects with the coin when he had the opportunity to play the pile of shredders into the opponents as well uh, so it's, it's one of these things where now he's in a situation where there's a lot of pressure coming out here yeah well he's also coined the death spite to kill a void walker like, it's not like he went into that flame imp to just get it off the board, represent a lot of damage. It was just a void walk he managed to, to yeah. take down with that first hit. So, as you said, maybe just a, a little bit too quick there. He could have maybe just held on for a turn, dropped it, right. coined out Shredder, then gone into Death Spider, sure. he said. He wouldn't have the coin then, but I think he'd still have the opportunity to yeah. use two Shredders, two in terms of a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the more I like it, the more I would, all, would all like that as well. The Death Spider just seems so convenient. It's such a powerful play, no matter what turn you do it on. Yeah, Makes sense. So Krovac's done a pretty good job, though, of uh, clearing up that bit, bit of a messy board there on Diggins' side. Uh, he does just leave the wolf foot, but it is now trading quite well with the Acolyte. Just can kill that off there. Yeah, but Krovac could have done the Whirlwind to get the full clear, but saving the Whirlwind for the Grim Patron is, uh, is something that you quite often want to do if you can. Yeah, oh, man, if you can't remove the... Uh, the brand Bronze Beer. That's a lot of Boom Bots coming out. <laughs> it's certainly... Oh, oh, my oh, what a draw! That's insane. Now you have the Grim Patron, you Interrage to copy it, and then you Whirlwind again, and you draw a card. Yeah, you get the two more, like, two additional card draw. Or two cards. Uh, well, one extra draw, so should I say. Yeah. Um, and also what this does is removing the Dire Wolf brings the attack of the minions back down to two, which is what, you know, you want anything less than three against Patron, mostly. Definitely. Those bots, man. It's going to be those boom bots, of crazy. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens, unless he picks up a better alternative. Oh. Defender of Argus. I think Argus might be worthwhile. He gets the double buff on the minions, and the minions actually can kill the two three three patrons, which greatly reduces down the threat. I, I think this is just way safer than playing Dr. Boom here. It definitely is a safer play. How good is it to play Boom? Your opponent's at 18. I, I still feel a little bit worried if your opponent has one more Whirlwind if you play Boom. Yeah, well... Because if you play Boom, you're also going to kill two Grim Patrons, right? I, th I think you... Hmm. See, he can't play the Implosion with the Defender of Argus. He only has seven mana. It's just, if he had one more mana, it would be very obvious that the Defender Implosion is the play. But looks like he is going to try to, to try to clear a bit of these. Not going to try his luck with those uh, Boom bots. Getting those those double buffs from the Brand Thrones Beard. Also, not completely meaningless because there could be another whirlwind in Pokrovac's hand, in which case uh, the four ones could have been easily cleared. And also we saw Pokrovac uh, use, use an execute earlier as well. So, so these minions, although on two health and the two patrons look like they're going to trade into the taunts, still it just makes it a little bit more reasonable that he would require a whirlwind or something first to proc that second patron. 
<laughs> Pokro, like drawing some more cards. He already had almost a full hand, and now there's going to be... How many cards? There's nine cards right now. Is there any reason to fire War Axe and play Ghoul? You can fire War Axe uh, attack into one of the minions with the 5-1 patron because it's on one health and it doesn't matter. Um, but then you play the Ghoul and just hope he can't directly kill the patron because yeah. the second you start to spawn more patrons again, yeah. it becomes very, very difficult for the Warlock. Like, this was a good response from Diggin, but I feel like this could be a, 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 another counter again from Pokrovac. Yep. Yeah, I like the idea of like forcing your opponent into trading into the patrons. And so now we're left in the situation. Oh. Let's just go back a couple of turns where he had yeah. patrons again, and there we go. But he has two chances. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, right? The implosions can always do You have two tries. <laughs> Such a powerful play from Bokrovak there. Getting to use those, uh, those I mean, patrons I, so efficiently. I think you have to implosion, right? I mean, obviously you don't have to. There are other options, but... I don't know. I think you just have to remove that. I'll try and like hit at least for three on that patron. What about the implosion twice after killing off the ghoul? Because there's going to be a three-two patron and a three-three patron. So if you just if you just trigger the ghoul, then go for the double implosions, then try to get a three or a four on the full health one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that might yeah, be because, because you guarantee the two hit on the two health one, right? Right. So, so if this implosion is a two. Oh, no, no, it is no, no. not overkill kill. with four. We are seeing another four. Huh. No, okay. That's a full board if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that's actually kind of scary board. Pokrovac, even though he has so many cards, there's no whirlwind effect available this turn. The Death Spite would provide that next turn, but he, he would love to do it now what, and not the next turn. What's kind of interesting now, though, is that Pokrovac can actually just Death Spite face. And this will stop the uh, and not play a minion, and this will stop his opponent. Other than saying like double PO or you know whatever, it'll just stop them playing anything else. And there's only eight Ooh, damage on the I board like at it. the moment. I like it so much. And this sets up he's got Grom or you know Absolutely. whatever he wants next turn. So it just makes him a bit more secure, and he clears off all the one ones next turn. Yeah, that's actually a very funny consequence of having too many imps. Diggin has to kill his own minion first, which he can't. Oh, that sea giant would be really nice to play. Wow, <laughs> that's a little inconvenient. <laughs> Or the Doctor Boom, or the load up. Every single D minion Diggin's is First there. world zoo problem? Roll <laughs> too high on my implosion? Exactly. You can't play Sea Giant? Roll too high on implosions. Oh, he man. needs to tech in that I would sacrificial like to know that pact. Feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and he wish he rolled two on one of those implosions and, and three on the other one, right? Instead of right. six. Yeah. Would have worked out much better. But as it is, the options are to life tap or not to life tap. To power realm or not to power realm. There's not that much he can do. Yeah, I think the life tap's oak okay. sick. <laughs> I think the hunter tops. hero power to my own face. <laughs> it's, it's okay on this turn though, because you're not really expecting burst to actually kill you next turn, which is your, your main threat. And then you have low them next turn once these minions get cleared up. So right. there are options, and life tap's fine. If he was on 18 to 16, I'd be a little bit more scared. But I think that tap was okay. Do we I see the Grom here? Because he does not have an activation for it if he waits waits for uh, for later on. I wouldn't be too surprised if he, if he just chose to play it here. He I does have other options too, like the Sludge Belcher to play it more defensively. I with think the Father Berserkers. Uh -huh. I think the problem with Grom is that if you play it, you can't armor up as well. And then you are only on eight health, right? So there, there is still, you've not seen like power of overwhelmings yet. Okay. Uh, there might be another, it like, might be Leroy abusive and then you just lose. So I think this is like the much safer play. Can, uh, squeeze in the ghoul and armoring up. So this is prepping. He, now he sort of has a half activated for Chrome oh, next yeah. turn. He can yeah. use that to activate the Chrome. So he could get 15 out, out, of, out of that. Ghoul's an activator too, Savit. Don't sure forget is. about it Ghoul. Sure is. Come yeah. on. He wants it's, to join in. It's more often it's uh, thought about, uh, I say, a more defensive card than, uh, than an offensive one. But in this particular instance, uh, it, sure. gets, it does get the job done. Oh my god, Diggin reverses it, plays round the ghoul activator by not playing any minions. <laughs> 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 or he just plays like super weak minions like yeah, Arch like, Squire oh, and Hunter Cooper. <laughs> well, the boom butts yeah. still yeah. might be able to yeah. save him. Oh my god. I don't want to say it's it's not it's not gonna happen. It, oh he needs to get exactly double fours. On, on, the, on, on the Grom. As long oh as, sequen on, as, yeah. long as the sequence. But the like armor smith as well, like this is this is gonna help. Just providing that extra one minion that the boom box can hit. I don't even wanna see it. He doesn't wanna see it. There was a small I wanna like, see that. One in five, then he was like uh, hold on, one in twenty. Yeah. One in four hundred chance that he would have survived, if I got it correctly. I mean it's still a few months away from July fourth, but I would love to see some fireworks right, <laughs> right now.
That's a good that game, a good series, and a handshake tossed out. Pokervaj is an, the second player to go to the top four, winning Group B. Congratulations to the 16-year-old player. And once again, put on the world on notice that this is a player that people don't know too much about. But if you ask some of his practice partners from that region, uh, he's definitely a solid player. Yeah, he's certainly leaving his mark here. Going up against Naiman yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, and also it's kind of interesting that Naiman and Prokovac, two of the most confident players here, and they're actually winning <laughs> as well. It's yeah. not something, you know, in Hearthstone it's very difficult to like talk about, yeah, I'm, I'm just the best, I'm going to win everything, and then actually do it. And these guys are doing pretty well so far. Yep, certainly. Already a star in his high school, signing autographs. Already a star in the making on the international stage. Pokervaj is waiting with Nimsh over at the fireside for a few words. Thank, thank you so much, Frodan. I'm here with Pokervaj, who just won the match and advanced to the top four. So first question, man, your lineup. You've prepared for this uh, tournament specifically and for your opponent. What is your strategy versus Diggin? And did you hit your matchups? My strategy on this tournament was to counter decks like Zoo, Secret Paladin, and Druid. And yeah, that's all. All right, and how do you counter them? Like, what exactly do you, do you have? I have really good matchups against him, like with Priest and with Patron Warrior and with Zoo, which I have more into more aggressive than normal zoo and my paladin is also good against druid because i have cards like aldor true silver yeah. all right and uh, the, the first game you lost versus the druid was that uh, planned a bit did he win the mind games or was it absolutely planned it wasn't planned of course but uh, he had pretty good turn which where he cast Big Game Hunter, Red and Swipe, and it was absolutely game-changing. All right, so Pokrovac is our winner for this match at least, and we have TJ and Brian waiting at the desk to dissect the match. So, guys, what did you think? Hey, Nipsch, thank you very much. Yeah, I thought it was a great match, and uh, we've seen some really high-level plays so far over the course of the day. I've been uh, really happy with the, the games we've got to see. A wide variety of decks, and I want to get your thoughts because we saw both of these players have Patron Warrior as part of their lineup. If we go back to the America's Championship, we saw most of the players that brought Warrior brought Control Warrior. Why, why do you think this is that the uh, European players bring Patron Warrior so much more? Is it like a stylistic choice? Well, as Prokovac was just saying uh, in his interview with Nimsh there, the Patron Warrior deck is ex exceptionally strong against uh, a lot of the, the minion-based strategies that, that uh, are... Uh, uh, like things like control, uh, mm. or rather, <laughs> secret paladin yeah, yeah. and zoo and such. So uh, it's clearly worked out very well for him there. Yeah, yeah, it did. And uh, we've seen a lot of the European players do bring those minion focused decks where there was a lot more of a control style, it felt, uh, in the Americas. So uh, I guess that makes sense. Uh, let's uh, flip the switch a little bit and go towards uh, the Druid versus Paladin game, actually. This is game number one. There was some interesting decision making that we saw from both of these players. So uh, let's go ahead and bring up that first clip. And these are back-to-back -back turns, these two replays that we're going to show on the screen here. Pokerback making the decision here. A lot of players, Kibler, would have made the snap call on turn five here to go with the Lothab, especially since you got that, such a good curve. Uh, but Pokerback actually makes a, a, a different choice here. Uh, why do you think this is? And walk us through this play. So here, Pokervac recognizes that the Emperor Tharsin is a huge, huge threat. Uh, if he allows that to stay up, it, there's the possibility of potentially just enabling combo, enabling huge removal turns. Uh, so he decides that he wants to remove Emperor Tharsin with his two minions. If he does that and plays Lotheb, he's just going to lose his Lotheb to his opponent's damaged Lotheb. So instead, he sets up his Avenge and uses Hero Power. And one interesting thing about this is that this kind of conceals exactly what he has, because uh, if his opponent, because his opponent has a 5-2, he is afraid that this is just a noble sacrifice. That's definitely a secret yeah. you want to play in this situation. So it ends up making Diggins turn slightly awkward as well. He can't just use his mana efficiently, has to hero power, and ends up triggering that Avenge uh, and giving him a big spider. Yeah, and another reason being is thinning that Avenge out, forcing your opponent to, you know, not know the secret, maybe bluffing that it's noble sacrifice, like you said, because he does have the Mysterious Challenger next turn. So that second Avenge also pulls a secret out of your deck, which makes your average draw later in the game uh, just that much better. So let's take a look at that that turn that Diggin had to make that was a little bit awkward and how he navigated through this one. So uh, it, it was a tough choice for him, and he's got pretty much just a handful of spells. And I know a lot of people were saying, should he just attack into a cre the Creeper and swipe? 
But he doesn't really know what secret this is. So what, what's Diggin's mindset here? Why does he just go ahead and pass his turn? Yeah, so, so Diggin is definitely looking to play around that Noble Sacrifice we were just discussing. He has that Lotheb with three damage on it. So if, it, if he did simply attack with Lotheb, it would die to Noble Sacrifice. So he definitely wants to use his hero power. Uh, and once he uses his hero power, he, he takes out the Recruit, which leaves the big spider, which doesn't really give him a great way to use the rest of his cards in hand because of that Avenge. So he does just decide to go to face. And thanks to the, uh, the combination of effects he has in his hand, the big game hunter and the swipe, as we actually heard Prokovac uh, mention in his interview, he's able to react even to Prokovac's very powerful turn with the Mysterious Challenger uh, just a turn later. Yeah, and it, it ended up working out. Diggin actually went on to win that game. And you have to sort of think in your mind, the players don't have perfect information. We, we know that it's Avenged, but he didn't. So we had to account for all the scenarios in his mind. And we talked about the, the play before where he probably thought it was Noble Sacrifice, and that's why he wanted to fit in that hero yeah. power. So uh, definitely a couple of interesting turns and, and a very fun game to watch. So uh, thanks, Kibler, once again for your analysis. But we have two games left. We're about halfway through the day. So we're going to jump back into the matches. But before we do that, let's check out some highlights from those last games.